Welcome back to Startup Hack. With my 25 years of development experience, here at Startup Hack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in as little as three months. So performance optimization is more than just a technical concern for many software developers. It's a fundamental aspect that directly impacts customer satisfaction and loyalty. Let's dive into some practical performance optimization tips for your C-sharp applications. All right, so let's face it, nobody likes a slow or sluggish application. In this video, we'll share some down-to-earth advice to help you speed up your code without using complicated algorithms or advanced techniques. In fact, most of the time, it's using better practices and trying to not be fancy. So it's just some practical tips that you can start using right away for optimizing performance in C Sharp. So let's dive into some, some practical performance optimization tips for your C Sharp applications. Now, right off the bat, we want to talk about with defined performance optimization in the context of a C-sharp application. We're going to highlight the importance of optimizing performance for better user experience and cost efficiencies. So let's get into some code here because that's what we like. Now, make sure that you always uh, download these code samples because we make sure that we include all code samples. And so make sure to check out the link down below because we have hundreds of different code samples because we love to train software developers here at Startup Hack. All right. So the very first thing we're going to dive into is use String Builder efficiently for string manipulation. So here's an inefficient way that you can see of using a string, right? They've, we've got this loop and we're doing a plus equals on this. Now this will work, but it's just not efficient. The better way is to use String Builder. String Builder is known to be way more efficient and way more effective in your applications than a standard uh, just string concatenation. And what, it's, what the string concatenation is doing here is just really inefficient. String Builder is proved to be efficient over and over again. So in this case, we can see that as we run this, what we would get is this will run in just a fraction of the time comparatively here. And plus, we get a lot of other beneficial things that we can do with String Builder. So unless I'm going to do, uh, you know, append one or two strings, um, usually if you go more than one or two times, dive into String Builder. It's a way better option here. All right, now this next one here is going to be how we can optimize some of our link queries. So while link offers convenient ways to work with collections, if you construct these queries poorly, it can result in really bad bottlenecks. So you want to avoid using operations like order by or to list unless it's required to. So we can see an inefficient link query here where you can see it ends in to list and it's also doing an order by. So instead, if you actually use link, you can actually say where item equals some property um, and then you can link these instead of ordering by another property. So anytime you can uh, avoid the orders by, now sometimes you need to do this, but in a lot of cases you don't need to. So if ordering by is not necessary, avoid it. Um, and you can do that a lot of times by optimizing some of your data stores instead so you don't even need to order by it. And maybe you change the default uh, of, this or of this data store to be just what you need to be ordered by. All right. The next item here is how we can minimize object instantiations. So a lot of times you may be reusing an object over and over again. And so in this case, it's going to reinstantiate this object every single time you go through this loop. And this is going to be really costly. Again, on modern computers, you may not see a ton of this. But if you're really doing this at a large scale, this could be really costly. So if I saw something like this happening on page load every single time we're in an API that is on one of your main page loads, I'd be really careful about this. Because a better way is you can instantiate the object once and then do something with it here. And it's going to re, uh, reinitialize it every single time. But rather than having to reset up the object every single time, this way is going to make it a lot more efficient. And so you can see that in this way, uh, in not creating objects unnecessarily, you can really decrease your memory usage here. All right, this next one is going to be avoiding boxing and unboxing. So, you know, right here we're creating just an object. And in general, I kind of cringe almost every time I see the word object and just see um, just the object variable. Most times there's some form of lazy coding here, and sometimes it can't be avoided. But in a lot of cases, I'd really rather see something like this where you can see this unboxing example. So you really want to make sure that you're really careful to un use boxing and unboxing whenever you don't want to. And a lot of times this can actually break too. This is kind of dangerous because you never know but what this object, what it really creates here or what it's you know, been using here. 
um, what it's used as. And in some cases, you're back into the old PHP Wild West or JavaScript Wild West, where you don't know really exactly what type is coming through here. So sometimes in some of these boxes and unboxing, not only is it bad performance, you can actually really kind of break the whole fact that uh, C Sharp is a type safe language. All right, let's talk about implementing asynchronous programming. So synchronous programming versus asynchronous programming. And asynchronous programming allows your application to perform non-blocking operations, improving responsiveness and scalability. So make sure to utilize async and await keywords and asynchronous methods where available, especially for I.O. bound operations. So we can see in this case, you can just have a method that's, that's doing something, right? And just by adding the async and by instead of changing from a void to a task, now you can see that this will actually perform in an async manner. Uh, this is something that was new to C Sharp a long time ago, and you want to really make sure that you take advantage of this because it really does improve the performance of your application. All right, now, every developer's favorite. Let's dig into some memory management. Efficient, efficient memory management is crucial for optimizing performance in C Sharp applications. Avoid unnecessary object allocation and be mindful of memory usage, especially in long running or high throughput scenarios. So we can see in this case that we're creating this byte, right? And in this case, this would be really inefficient memory management because unless you knew you had exactly this many, um, this many, uh, you know, unless this was going to allocate this every single time for a large buffer that just wasn't even necessary, you can actually check in condition and then make sure that you initialize it. So um, this will create an empty and won't allocate all of the memory to it right away unless you absolutely need to. So just be very careful with that. But that leads into our very next one. You know, when you can, use a value type instead of a reference type. Um, a class is, you know, an object or a class is going to always use a reference type. And this is going to create a fair amount of overhead as you're, um, as you're going with it. I'm going to make my code a little bit bigger here. Um, as you're working with these objects, again, they're not terrible in modern computing, and you can use a lot of these. But if all you're going to do is store one property, just use a variable. Now, I, I'm going to counter this right here a little bit because if you're going to pass this as a parameter, rather than passing uh, two different parameters, I'll always create a simple object instead of passing two parameters. Uh, but then we also now have records in C Sharp as well. But again, when, it, when you don't need to, don't create an object if you don't have to because there will be some overhead. All right, this next one's one of my favorites. I see junior developers dive into this all the time. They solve everything with loops. And a lot of times you have to be really careful because if you're not careful with your loops, you can get into some bad things really quickly. A lot of times I'll see something um, happening against a database inside of a loop, and that's almost always a, something that I will throw a red flag for me. So we want to make sure we really watch for loops, right, to make sure we're being really efficient. Um, you can see here that this is an inefficient loop, or this is a pretty optimized loop, right? And so, um, you know, loops are often a hot spot for performance uh, issues, and so you really want to minimize the loop operations. So move invariant calculations outside the loop and consider looping unrolling for significant performance gains. So again, this is just to check length, and uh, you can see that operation is moved outside of the loop. All right. Now, let's talk, talk about interrupt calls. You don't see a lot of these much anymore in C, inside of C Sharp, but you may have an API that's doing something, and these interrupt methods can be, um, uh, can be really tricky. And so interoperability calls between managed and unmanaged codes can introduce overhead. Minimize the frequency of the interrupt calls and consider batching operations to reduce the impact on performance. Um, so let's pretend that interop is, this interrupt call is being done here, um, this call to uh, man, unmanaged code. And you can see in this example, what it's going to do here is uh, do this on every single iteration of the loop. Instead, we can actually get a, get a collection, get an array. We know exactly how many times. And then we could pass this array to an interop batch method. Mm -hmm. So again, if you can batch this, I'm a big believer in when batching, batchable, do it. Um, generally, my rule with uh, architecting an application is that unless you can do it in under, um, unless you can do that in under um, a second, then it's really not something that you want to be doing uh, large scale. Sorry, that didn't even make sense. So unless you're going, so if you're building a web application or an API, unless it can be done in less than a second, it really needs to be moved off to a batch. Really, web uh, responses or API responses need to be something that's under a second. All right, let's talk a little bit about optimizing data, database access. So 
we can use something like memory cache to, uh, to cache frequently accessed data. And I do this all the time. So memory cache uh, creates a new memory cache. Then we can see the cache data here, and this is just an example. We can check and see if that cache data exists in the cache, and then if not, we can go and get it from the data, so data source and then make sure to set it into the cache. Um, again, this is something that a junior developer I don't see jump to a lot of times. And you have to be very quick, careful, because you need to know exactly uh, how long cache can be. So I've seen this also bite you if you don't do it correctly. But done correctly, caching is a powerful, powerful tool and a great way to optimize your application. All right, now this is another one that I don't really see a lot of modern developers using anymore, which is kind of an interesting one. It's one that's always seemed to, uh, to really strike out to me. So use a using a class versus a struct. So if you have a little small data set, and especially if it's something you're going to iterate on very frequently, a struct can be a powerful thing. Now they can't be used in every case, um, but both a class and a struct uh, version serve as the same purpose. But using a struct for small, lightweight data structures can be more efficient. Structs are value types, and they're typically allocated on the stack, making them faster to allocate and access compared to a class, which are reference type allocated on the heap. So again, there, not everything can be done with a struct, but when you can, man, when in doubt, use a struct, because they are really super powerful. All right. Now, we definitely want to, this is one I get on with uh, junior developers all the time as well. And I actually catch senior developers on this quite a bit too. We really want to avoid excess exception handling. I'll find code that will have like three and four uh, different exception, ha exception handling depths. And you'll see a try catch buried inside of a try catch. And you'll see rather than people check, you know, rather than checking to see if a value is equal to this, they're like, oh, you know, if it fails there, it'll just hit the catch. Very expensive. Um, and so one of the, uh, and so that's very careful. The other part here is we want to make sure we use specialized exceptions, right? A generic exception can be very uh, costly because it's going to have to box and unbox a lot of that. Whereas if you can build a very specific exception handler, this allows you to really minimize it and allows the exception handling to handle faster. But overall, be very careful in how you're using your try catches because this is something I see developers make a mistake with all the time. This is not a good pattern for using your code flow. Don't use try catches for your code flow. All right, last but not least here, optimize your resource usage, right? So uh, we want to be mindful of resource usage such as file handlers, networking connections, and database connections. Close or dispose of resources promptly after use to avoid resource leaks and contention. So in this example, we demonstrate proper resource management when working with a file. The inefficient approach opens a file for reading, but fails to properly dispose of the file handle afterwards, which can lead to resource leaks. The optimized approach uses a using statement, which ensures um, uh, uses the using statement, which ensures that the file handle is properly disposed of after its use, even if an exception occurs within the block. This is, ensures efficient resource usage and prevents resource leakage. So. When using something like a file, definitely use using. Uh, I know, especially with Microsoft SQL, using these using statements around opening and closing database is very important. So this is just a few of the tips and tricks. I'd be curious to hear what you uh, liked or didn't like. It, do you agree? Do you disagree? I love having a good, healthy conversation. So make sure you leave your comments down below. And make sure you like and subscribe, because here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers. We, uh, with my 25 years of development experience, we take people with zero experience and help to train them to be ready to start as full stack software developers in as little as three months. So make sure you check out the link down below or go to startuphack.com today. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.